गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द अनादर लेक्चर ऑफ पैरासाइटिक एडेप्टेशन इन हेलमेन माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर निशा सिरोया असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन जोलॉजी एच पी सी गवर्नमेंट कॉलेज अजमेर इन आर प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस अबाउट सम मॉर्फोलॉजिकल चेंजेस इन अ पैरासाइट एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दीज चेंजेस दे लीव इजीली इन साइड इन साइड द body of the host and in this lecture we continue this and we will discuss about some more changes in a parasite so the next category is modification for attachment essential prerequisite for parasite life is possession of suitable mechanism to attach strongly with host body and where they live uh, they need it strongly and they need to attach inside the host body or where, wherever they live if they live in a intestinal tract they have to attach there so some follow following modifications for attachment are often encountered encountered like the acetabulum or uh, the sucking organs which is Uh, found in all the adult flatworm which uh, parasitic in man flatworm means the facial hepaticum in the liver fluke it consists two suckers on the ventral side of the body one anterior and one posterior to it so there are two suckers are found second in the case of uh, human trachoma it consists of either sucking tongue or groove or four cups at the cephalic end of the worm cephalic end means at the anterior part of the flat worm and in the trachoma the scolex bears four large suckers like intinia solium or uh, accessory suckers or leaf like outgrowth on the scolex called the botridium phylo botridium has four botridia each a uh, botridium with a sucker echino botridium bears two botria is a shallow groove on the scolex and a spiny head stalk and in uh, in the other species there are many uh, there are found many uh, proboscis uh, which have the spines and in some mono genies a highly specialized attachment organ at the posterior part of the body called the hapter this found in the opisthator with suckers and hooks uh, like in the pilostoma and an anterior adhesive organ uh, which is uh, sometimes called the prohapter consisting of suckers and adhesive glands these uh, some these structures are present in different species which are the parasite yeah which are live like a parasite the second category is hooks in some tapworms and nematodes hooks are uh, situated or situated in or around the anterior end uh, if we talk about the tinea solium in tinea hooks are arranged in double circlate at the base of the prostellum and in the dog tapworm it occurs in several rows around the proboscis uh, which may be Pivoted. Hooks are often provided with series of teeth and are placed in the buccal capsule because hooks are a special structure which are help a parasite to attach at the body wall of the host. Uh, in some species, a buccal. a mature of tooth like structure is present which serve 
for tissue aberration and encourage the second category is blends in some of the helminths they have been developed in the vicinity of mouth unicellular secretory glands which serve in encourage in favorable habitat and add in the food supply and in trematodes these unicellular glands known as cytogenous glands and are more common in circadian stage and serve the purpose of penetration to the host tissue by elaborating histolytic substances in this way these glands are uh, function as attachment and as well as the uh, food supply in hookworms like ancylostoma there are glands in buccal region which are supposed to have anticoagulative and histolytic properties and it may help in the anticoagulative property may help them in the thick th sorry um, uh, to prevent the thickening of the blood now the modification for reproduction the most conspic conspicuous conspicuous elaboration in organs and tissue in the helminths is that of the reproductive system both platy helminth and nematodes have large part of their body mass occupied by these organs and their products because the other organs or other systems are degenerative uh, so instead of that the reproductive system are uh, well developed the adult flat worm with few exceptions are hermaphrodite the round worms are dioecious the adult flukes and tapworm have particularly complex reproductive organs in both the groups cross fertilization which was formerly the rule and is still a possibility has been um, suppressed by self fertilization because they are hermaphrodite and only one uh, it itself the animal produce the egg and the sperm uh, release and the self fertilization is possible in tapworm instead of a single body unit there are multiple segment proglottids each one is sexually complete itself so every segment the proglottid uh, perform the reproduction to ensure the perpetuation of the parasite species endoparasite produce a large number of eggs because there are um, the possibility of the um, high mortality is there so the they have to produce large number of eggs like in many species uh, they produce large number of eggs uh, in ascaris uh, it's the number are 2 lakh daily so in this way the uh, such an enormous amount of egg which are produced by the endoparasite had to continue the race where the chances of the survival are very remote the unaltered system two system of organ the nervous and the excretory have remained almost unchanged however the excretory system in the case of flatworm has undergone some insightful changes greatest modification among the helminths have been encountered in such form that reside in the blood or lymph system or in the muscular tissue or form that attach to the peritoneum so they have to they have been reasonably designed as old parasite while these forms which live in mouth or bladder of the host or in the body surface have been termed young parasite as demonstrated by the relatively slight modification from the prototype of the groups now some other uh, now the other category of changes which is called the physiological adaptations 
and in this category we will discuss the intracellular first we will discuss about the intracellular digestion adult in the adult liver fluke facial hepatica uh, we know that uh, feed on bile blood lymph and other nutrients of the host and the digestion pro probably extracellular and take place in the intestinal cecum reverse food is mostly in the form of sorry the reserve food is uh, mostly in the form of glycogen and fat and they can check up glucose and other molecules through their body surface the species in which nutrients are absorbed through the body surface is uh, regarded as the intracellular digestion cestors lack any form of digestive canals so they feed on tissue elements and inflammatory exudates all nutrients are absorbed uh, across the tegument and so digestion is intracellular there is uh, no any extracellular digestion is found so in this way <coughs> the digestion digestion pro process is performed now the osmoregulation by the process of osmoregulation the endoparasite helminths maintain a relatively const consistency of balance the salt ions and water in their tissues parasitic helminths such as cestodes and trematodes maintain the same osmotic pressure as that of their hosts so there is no difficulty in maintaining their life because there there are same concentration in the inner body fluid and outer environment and the another is an aerobic respiration because uh, we are mm, discussing about the parasite condition and in the end up endo parasites they live in an environment when where there is more or less lack of oxygen so they have become adapted in a low metabolic rate which requires a minimum amount of oxygen so they have to uh, perform the anaerobic respiration because of the environmental condition there are not sufficient oxygen is available so in this case the respiration is anaerobic type and consists of extracting oxygen from the food which are absorbed in the tegument so in this way we see that the absence of oxygen energy released by the fermentation of the glycogen and which is broken by glycolysis and uh, form pyruvate and the pyruvic acid so in this way we uh, discuss some anaerobic uh, respiration and the parasitic adaptations in a parasite thank you so much